the other video was uh, extraocular uh, eye muscles and their movement. We're going to talk about the, the basic anatomy of the eye in this video. So I'm going to draw an eye um, from the side. Right. The eye is going to come back. Then there's the optic nerve, which is going to head into the brain. So um, about five uh, sixth um, of the eye uh, is white, the posterior part. That's the uh, sclera. Okay. And then you get about one sixth uh, in the front is going to be kind of this clear portion up front, which is called the cornea. Okay. So the cornea is this uh, anterior, let's say one sixth. I don't know why I remember one sixth. And about five sixth is the white uh, connective tissue, the sclera. So you're, well, that's why your eyeball is white. Okay. And the cornea is the transparent part in the front that's got this little dimple right uh, here. Okay. Now, um, as a matter of external anatomy, covering the eye where it sits in the orbit, uh, you have the lower lid and the upper lid, and you're going to have a layer, uh, another layer of transparent tissue that covers uh, the cornea and some of the eye and then folds back on itself to run out to where the, uh, I'll put the little lashes, where the eyelid is and the, the upper eyelid. Okay? That blue uh, transparent layer is called the conjunctiva. And that's where you get uh, conjunctivitis and such in pink eye. Okay? But the internal uh, anatomy of the eye. The uh, posterior half or so of the eyeball, think of this as like a um, like a split cup, like a ball you cut. So we're just kind of looking at this in a sagittal plane. You've got your uh, retina at the back. And we'll talk about the retina and its parts in, in just a moment. Okay? Okay. And then uh, between the sclera and the retina, which runs up a little bit forward, you're going to have another layer that's called the choroid. The choroid layer. Okay, Old-fashioned cameras, when uh, the light used to come in from the camera and bounce off the uh, choroid, you'd get a, the red light reflex, or you'd see red through the pupil. That was just shining back, that choroid layer. It's the, the vascular layer. Now, at the uh, anterior part of your eye, your eye can be divided into two sort of chambers. Okay? There are, uh, along the choroid, there's this little structure here called the ciliary body. The ciliary body and the ciliary muscles. From the ciliary body, you get these little suspension, suspensory ligaments, and there's this round sort of oblong structure here that is the lens, okay? the lens of your eye. The ciliary bodies are going, the ciliary muscles are going to run out in a couple different ways. They're going to be um, if you look at an eye from the front, you've got radial muscles in the pupil uh, or around the pupil, and then you've got some um, circumferential and radial. So some like the spokes of a wheel and some that kind of run around uh, in concentric circles. And these two overlapping um, layers of muscle with a little bit of pigment uh, make up the iris of the eye. Okay? The opening in the iris, that circular aperture in the middle, is known as the pupil. Okay? So this is the pupil. Light rays come in. Right? Light rays come in through the pupil, uh, and it is uh, constricted or dilated by the iris, uh, those, those muscles of the iris, uh, like the shutter on a camera to allow more or less light in. The light will go through the lens, and hit the retina, and then there's a little more complex um, transduction of uh, photons into neural signals that will travel back along the optic nerve to your brain. We'll come back to that in a moment. But um, you've got the area uh, anterior to the, the iris and under the, the cornea, which is called the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber, where the, the fluid that's in there is the uh, aqueous humor, because it's uh, more water-like, it's very thin in the anterior chamber, anterior to the lens, and it's flowing around here um, where the, uh, the iris 
which will um, dilate and be pulled open by those radial uh, muscle parts when you're uh, uh, having a sympathetic response. And then the, the round muscles will constrict the pupil down when you're having uh, more of a parasympathetic response. And um, that'll let more or less light in, okay? So the, uh, the fluid up here under the, under the cornea in this little area, this transparent part, which is all deep to the conjunctiva between the lids, this is the anterior chamber, aqueous humor. Once you get uh, posterior to, or I always thought of as deeper into the eyeball itself, uh, posterior to the lens, this would be the vitreous uh, or posterior chamber full of vitreous humor, which is more of a thick kind of a jelly-like substance. Um, and the whole thing's closed off and between the anterior and posterior chamber and those two fluids, it gives the eye some uh, rigidity so it doesn't uh, collapse. And the blood pressure from the vessels that are flowing through the choroid, um, they're also going to be providing some, some pressure. You have the uh, pressure, internal pressure of your eyeball measured in a uh, glaucoma test. I think they do it differently now, but when you go to the eye doctor and they put that little, that little puff of air on your eye, they're really pushing a puff of air on your, on your eye ball, to oversimplify, and seeing if they can dent it in. If the pressure is low inside because the aqueous or vitreous humors uh, or even blood pressure is too low, uh, there's an injury of some sort, a disease, the eyeball will kind of squish in, like if you push in on a basketball that's underinflated. If the ball uh, of the eye, the eyeball, is overinflated like a basketball due to high blood pressure, very, very common, or some other disease, it will resist that little indention of air, uh, and that can be uh, indicative of some sort of eye diseases. All right, so three layers of sclera. The anterior one six is a, is, of the sclera is uh, transparent. That's the cornea. And the uh, choroid and then the retina at the back. I'm going to draw the uh, uh, plane through here, so we're looking at the retina through the pupil, okay? Or through your ophthalmoscope. You're looking into someone's eye. You're looking at the retina. At the back of the eye, kind of look uh, like this, or at least these are parts you should know. So back of the eyeball, you're going to have um, the optic disc. Okay? Think of the optic disc as the area at the back of the retina where the the optic nerve would leave the back of the eyeball. Okay. Okay. So the optic disc is where all of the uh, axons from the, the rods and cones and the light sensitive neurons, the, the ganglion cells and such, of the um, retina, all those little neural tissues, they're sending their, their central processes um, all along through the retina and then out as the optic nerve. Uh, so as a result, there are no rods and cones or light sensitive material at the base of the optic nerve and the retina, which is the optic disc. So this is also your blind spot because there are no photoreceptive cells in that area. You don't actually have a blind spot because the uh, visual cortex in your occipital lobe just sort of fills in what it thinks should be there. It's sort of a um, neurologic trick. Just to the side, uh, you're also going to see lots of uh, arteries and veins in the retina, and you can kind of look at those uh, for different clinical or pathological purposes. Next to that, you'll have an area over here that is called the macula densa. The macula densa is an area of highest concentration of um, your rods and cones, uh, mostly cones, highest concentration there. And then there's this area right in the center of the macula densa, which is called the fovea centralis. Okay. That's the highest area. That's where your best vision is. And most of your extraocular muscles we talked about in another video are designed to move around to get the object of your attention focused through the pupil onto your fovea, right, which is in that area, high concentration of cones and then rods as you go out. We'll go into that maybe in another um, uh, more detail-oriented video, like a neuro series or something. We'll talk about the cranial nerves individually. But um, so for your eye, your basic anatomy, you know where your optic disc or blind spot is. The macula densa and the fovea centralis are all parts of the retina. The retina is the... Um, 
deepest layer, the photosensitive layer at the back and sides of the eyeball, and then you have the choroid layer, then the sclera, and you can rewind the video to watch those parts if necessary. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel if you like the anatomy overview videos, and we'll get you more in the future.